Uh, we contributed to the standards for the participants back in 1993 when the original dive shops at the time got together and tried to kind of craft sort of a community standard. Also, we helped in 2013 when the uh, Coast Guard and DLNR had asked the uh, local tour operators to come together and create sort of the best practices. One of the most important things we've done is the Manta catalog. Uh, back in 1991, got a photograph of a mantra named Lefty. Most of you probably met her. Her left cephalic fin folds up in front of her mouth. Took a four by six of a photograph. Some of you guys are old, remember what photography is. And we're lucky to get a picture glued into my scrapbook and she's manta ray number one. Today we have 254 different manta rays that we've identified using those spots of tome apart. Uh, each manta ray is a unique individual. Um, Lefty is the one we've known the longest. The oldest photo of her we've ever found was taken in 1979 and she was already full grown at that time. I haven't seen her in the last couple months. Has anyone seen Lefty recently? Since April. April? Okay. She's out there somewhere, I hope. Um, next slide. Uh, as I mentioned, Manta Pacific Research Foundation is a 501c3 uh, founded in 2002, dedicated to research, education, conservation, and manta rays. Most important thing we've achieved, I think, is so far as we got manta rays protected in the state of Hawaii. Next slide. In 2009, Governor Lingle signed Act 09209, making it illegal to kill or capture manta rays in the state of Hawaii. It took six years to get that done. It began in 2003 and it wasn't until 2009 that we got the law actually passed. Uh, so when you talk about things happening, you know, Maria, I think we're moving faster now than we did back then. We also contributed with CITES, the Convention on International Trade and Endangered Species. They met in Bangkok and, in, next slide, and we had manta rays added to Appendix 2, which makes it illegal to kill or capture manta rays and trade them internationally without making sure that it is first sustainable. So a little bit about manta rays. Manta rays are really large sea creatures. Uh, they've got big pectoral fins that have evolved to be like wings. They propel themselves through the water by flapping. There's two species of manta, Manta alfredi, which is a smaller nearshore manta ray, which we have here in Kona. We've measured those. They're up to 12 feet across. The larger species is Manta barostris, and they grow to over 20 feet across. If you look on our catalog at mantapacific.org, we've got 254 manta rays. The vast majority of them are Manta alfredi. Manta barostris seem to be more rare. One of the things we know is that Manta alfredi are a nearshore manta ray and they don't migrate. Of all the mantas we've identified, well over 200 Manta alfredi, none of them have ever been recited in Maui. So we do have about 200 manta rays that have been identified in Maui as well. So it's kind of a closed population. The Manta barostris, on the other hand, one of the ones that we originally identified here was recited over in Molokini several years later. They're a pelagic species, so they travel unlike Manta alfredi. Uh, the Hawaiian name for manta ray is Hahalua. Next one. Uh, animal scientific classification, Animalia Kingdom, poor data, they got a spinal column, Trondictes, Elasmobranch, Badaforms, Mylobadaforms, Mobulidae, Manta, and then the two species, Manta Barosaurus and Manta Alfredi. Uh, they're related to sharks. They have a cartilaginous skeleton. They don't have a swim bladder. If manta rays stop swimming, they sink. Manta rays don't have any uh, uh, shark teeth. Next one. They are related to stingrays, but unlike stingrays where the mouth is on the bottom of the creature, the mantas' the mouth is at the very front. Uh, mantas use their uh, cephalic fins to force large amounts of water into their mouth. The water goes into their mouth, it goes out through their gills, and their branchial filters trap the plankton. Uh, manta rays don't have sharp teeth, but they do have a tooth band on the lower jaw only. <laughs> stingrays have tail stingers, as the top picture shows. Manta rays have no tail stinger. Manta rays for self-defense are really large, really fast, and really agile, and really they don't have very many predators in the ocean. Two primary places that we uh, have been visiting manta rays here in Kona, the traditional spot uh, right outside of Keaho Bay, Pa'akai Point, uh, now known as the Sheraton, originally it was called the Kona Surf. The other one is Makako Bay right out here by the airport, also known as Gardenio Cove. Pa'akai Point uh, is right there at the Sheraton. Uh, back in the 71 when they built the, what was then the Kona Surf, they started shining bright lights into the shallow water right in front of the, the hotel. The lights attracted plankton and the plankton attracted manta rays. From captive manta rays we know that they need to eat about 12% of their body weight every week in plankton. Uh, manta alfredi that's about 12 feet across we figure weighs about a thousand pounds. So they need a lot of food and this has been a great place for them to get food over the years. Um, Dive originally started, we'd swim into the shallow water right in front of the hotel. My first one was back in 1985. I did it with Jeff Leischer at Jack's Diving Locker. And at that time, the lights would bring in the plankton and we just kind of watched the manta rays as they swam back and forth. In 1991, uh, the dive started picking up some momentum and it went from being like one boat once a month, to a couple boats a night. 
Uh, we figured that if we put lights on the bottom, it would attract the manta rays out to a slightly deeper water where it's a little more manageable. You can imagine if you're in shallow water and there's any surge at all, it's very, very uh, kind of hectic. So we were able to get the manta rays to come out to a little bit deeper. Uh, the plankton uh, attracts the manta, light attracts the plankton. I don't know if we've trained the manta rays or they've trained us, but it seems to be working out pretty well so far. Uh, one of the things that's really changed recently is the uh, number of snorkelers. This is a great picture that Jeff let us use. It's uh, an aerial shot of Makako Bay, and you can see the snorkelers, the boards. You can see manta rays underwater. Uh, just a fantastic experience for people. Uh, Sam Kahn's numbers suggested maybe 150,000 people a year dive and snorkel with manta rays. It's a great way for people to learn about manta rays and get enthusiastic about manta rays and get enthusiastic about, uh, about the marine environment. I think Jacques Cousteau said it, people protect what they love, and when people go out and dive with manta rays and snorkel with manta rays, they tend to love manta rays after that, so it's a good thing. Jeff? The participant guidelines, the dive shops got together back in 1993, and there was probably only like maybe eight of us at the time. There was really no standard protocol on how to interact with manta rays, and while most people are comfortable to just sit and watch the beautiful manta rays as they swim around, some people are tempted to try to grab them and ride them and harass them and pull their tails and stuff like that. So the local dive shops at the time got together and we wrote the guidelines with the design to make them safe and fun, dive for the manta rays and the people. You know, rules, divers stay on the bottom, snorkelers stay on the surface, leave an open water column in which the manta rays can swim. Uh, try not to blow bubbles directly into the manta rays' face, don't touch the manta rays. Uh, if you've got camera equipment, try to keep it out of the manta rays' ways. And this was all before GoPros. I mean, now, you know, you see like a sea of GoPros of people trying to take pictures of manta rays. But it's kind of old school, we already knew that back then. Jeff? Uh, we teach Amanda Naturalist course uh, here through Lamanui at the uh, Hawaii Community College Workforce Development. Wendy and I have been teaching that for the last year and a half, trying to make sure that people who are actually out leading our guests, our customers on the tour, have a base of knowledge about what manta rays really are and, and how to do, do the dive properly, how to conduct themselves. And hopefully, by educating the educators, then the, the information can get paid forward. And the people who are doing the dive can come away with a really uh, a happy, successful uh, experience when they do the dive, and then hopefully they will become happier about the dive and want to support manta ray research and, and manta ray conservation, and in general, uh, marine biology, marine research, and marine conservation.